what's going on everyone on YouTube this is evil here I'm back it's been a while since I've uh, done anything on a channel I'm sorry uh, first you know I want to apologize for the lack of content I was on the family vacation for about like three weeks and um, and then when I when I got back about like a week ago there was a lot of games that came out <laughs> that I had to pick up including this one Tekken 7 and uh, Street Fighter 2 and so on you know so I was like like already occupied with stuff to play then I had like time shift to get back used to in the regime but um but yeah I'm back now I just wanna let that be said and um now we could look at today's review of Injustice 2 so Injustice 2 is the follow up game obviously Injustice uh, I know I didn't do a review on the first Injustice I was going to but never um, it just never pulled through like I just got preoccupied with other stuff then my computer got a virus then yeah then by the time yeah so maybe maybe when my channel like blows uh, becomes more popular I'll go do some retro reviews who knows we'll see what happens but um but Injustice 2 pretty much picks up a few years after the first game the graphics of the game have dramatically improved you know the story opens up uh, actually way earlier uh, it picks up as like the origins of Supergirl and the destruction of Krypton and the invasion of Brainiac to destroy their planet and then you know so more or less the the injustice version of Supergirl's origin is still like intact to its character and uh, she's one of like many new entries in this game that they added um, a lot of the characters like they like the ones that were in the last game like Batman and Arrow uh, feel more or less like similar in usage and while well, some like um, Green Lantern he has like the different move set and he p fights a little differently but um, the story of this game I won't go too much uh, in spoiler uh, territory or nothing like that um, you know but it's like I was saying earlier it picks up in a few years uh, after the last game, after Superman was imprisoned and, uh, you know, got his ass kicked by the other Superman, whoever didn't see him play the last game. The only thing that kind of is a plot hole to me is in the last game, uh, Damian Wayne killed, uh, Dick Grayson Nightwing and he became Nightwing. But while in this game, um, he's Robin again, so I'm I'm not I'm not kind of too sure what happened there. Like if it's taking place a few years after the last game, then shouldn't it be Nightwing still? I don't know. I don't know if like they forgot about that or like something happened in the comics version of Injustice that I missed. But yeah, so that happened. They turned Damian Wayne from Nightwing to Robin. Um, I was in the there's like a couple nitpicks about the story mode um, that I personally didn't like like that and the new Joker voice I thought was kind of like pretty bad I, and his new design I was a big fan of but um but uh, everyone else was like awesome you know like I still like playing as the Joker Harley was awesome Batman still my favorite character um, so everything's cool like the combat system um, is still like 
what it was from the last game just improved uh, visually and uh, frame rate wise and everything like I love how um, Nether Realm has has this great blend of combining the story mode with these chapter based events where you uh, like kind of like makes you learn each character through these story chapters you know like be people that you would normally not play but um it's like watching the movie you know so it's 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 really cool i like how the um, it's so good that almost every other fighting game series is kind of copying this genre like tekken 7 uh, there's it has their uh, story mode was similar just like cutscenes and fight street fighter 5 also with their story mode you know so it's like kind of like a theme ever since mortal kombat versus dc um i i would say mortal kombat dc was the first uh game that started this type of story cinematic story mode fight thing that's been going on in these recent games and then and then uh, another realm with Mortal Kombat 9 or the reboot uh, perfected it and then it's just been getting better and better as uh, as the games involved but but as far as uh, what's going on in, the, in this game as far as plot wise without going to big details here and there is after the events of the first game um apparently there like years have passed and Brainiac has come to invade the world and Batman has kind of been put in some sort of ultimatum to release Superman to help with the invasion and and then you know then he just got to worry about Superman double crossing or not you know stuff like that and um you know and a lot this game also went with the approach of uh, multiple choices like there'll be events in the game where a character will break off you know and you'll be choose if you wanted to play let's say uh green arrow or black canary and you choose uh, whichever one and then you have to go back and do you know the opposite decision later on if you want to 100% the story mode and by the way I was playing this game on the hardest difficulty and this shit is insane I do not recommend it by the time I was done with story mode I looked at my w win loss ratio and I had like <laughs> 60 wins and like 200 something losses it was ridiculous there was times where I like spent like an hour on one fight, and by the time I got up to the fight, like the Brainiac, I had to tone down the difficulty. It was like he was basically untouchable. It was ridiculous. But but I like the character choices they went with this game. Like uh, they went more uh, obscure characters for this one, like Swamp Thing and Blue Beetle, you know, and. Like, Firestorm, I can understand because he's been kind of getting popular from the Flash show, but um, but yeah, I like the like variety. But at this time of uh, recording my video, they've also released Red Hood, uh, the first DLC character, and he's cool. This game uh, still has a lot of Batman-related characters. Um, more than anyone you know they have a couple here and there you know they got like atrocities as a Green Lantern villain and you know like Gorilla Grodd as a Flash villain but majority of the characters are some I, I say are still from Batman's gallery um yeah so that's cool I don't care like the, the game could be all Batman if all I care you know like the more Batman has the best rogue gallery of like I think of any, any like superhero uh, or like Marvel or DC I think Batman has one of the best rogues therefore like 
you know, like, like when you come to, like, I don't know how, like, Netherrealm is, like, goes by character decisions, but if it was me, I would, like, majority would be, like, Batman characters, because, like, Batman has so many, like, badass supervillains that, um, it's awesome. But, um, but, yeah, like, I like, uh, um, the supers, uh, the, the LNR trigger supers are the same from the last game, like, Mortal Kombat. Uh, everyone had new ones this time. It's too bad they didn't, uh, decide to, uh, do, like, um, multiple supers where you could choose which super per character you wanted, like, to have. Kind of like Street Fighter F 4, where it made you choose the Ultra. It would have been nice to have like more than one variety per character, I don't know what I'm But, um, but yeah, you know, when you start this game, like you have like a little quick tutorial, uh, where it kind of gives you the, just the base of what's going on and how to control. They added some new mechanics in the game and compared to the last game. Like, I like the interaction the characters do when, uh, when they bump fists and, uh, you know, they exchange, like, personal words. Every, every character has, like, their own, like, like, variety of stuff they would say one another. And I think that's really cool the way that, uh, the way this game does that. I wish more fighting games would take a note of that and do some some stuff like that i remember back in the day uh like when i was playing like some of the older street fighter games like alpha 3 or third strike they would have uh certain characters if they were matched up together they have like the special intro like ken Wright would give a noogie or like you know like they'll have like special intro like uh, before they fight i wish like games did that more often um nowadays but um, uh, but aside of that, you know, like aside of that, I like uh, I like the presentation of the game. I like the uh, the character roster. I like how this game from the get go has a lot of characters. You know, like um, like I've noticed a lot of fighting games nowadays have been going like super cheap with it with their uh, starting roster like Street Fighter 5 roster was pretty small and on what I've been hearing like on uh, leak informations online that apparently Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite's roster is going to be only 28 from the get from the beginning you know and that's pretty small that's for that game it's pretty big for this game but it's pretty small for a Marvel vs. Capcom game considering the past had like you know 50 characters at least for Marvel 2 had 56 but but I like I like how Netherrealm like took their time and care giving you this awesome story mode giving you these multiple like modes you could play which I'll uh, go through and um, and then like further in the video uh, I'll go through the different modes but as for the story mode, I thought it was excellent and uh, very entertaining, and it's must uh, must be at least played once. I don't recommend on the hardest difficulty though. But um, but yeah, like now we'll uh, check out some of the other modes and um, so. The big uh, new addition to this game <clears throat> is the uh, the gear system, and you could unlock various loot boxes while you're playing the game. And uh, with these boxes, you'll be able to unlock random gear pieces for the characters in the game. You can uh, do various things to unlock these items, such as joining the guild and having random people online and to join your guilds and you can do various challenges in the game uh, to unlock more uh, more armor pieces 
you can um, with these armor pieces uh, customize your favorite characters in the game and um, and then change their uh, character balances some of them give you different moves some of them would uh, alter the stats of your uh, characters some of them are just uh, like just for cosmetic purposes you can unlock different abilities for your characters you can unlock uh, like alternate skins for example like flash has a reverse flash skin that has its own voice actor and own own dialogue dialect and uh, same goes for like Supergirl who has a Power Girl skin with it, uh, with its own voice actor and it's kinda cool how you could uh, customize the different uh, gears you could um, also play the multiverse mode which is basically outside of the story mode this is the main single player uh, option of this game um, where the multiverse is kind of like um, what can I compare it to the challenge tower from Mortal Kombat where you could do various challenges and fight uh, various AI uh, AI uh, under various conditions such as uh, your health decreasing while you're battling or environmental hazards in the ma middle of the battle or you can't jump that's I think the worst one or or I don't know like random stuff or you could also do um, random challenges in the middle of some of these missions like jumping uh, like nine times doing a jump kick or hitting your opponent with a super before winning the fight you know random challenges that give you like that extra points that add those extra little uh, yeah extra money for your little challenges to complete to uh, get more unlockables but with that said this also like entices you to play with characters that you normally don't play with because this game even though let's say you've unlocked maybe the best set of gear for a character you won't necessarily mean you'll be able to use it because all the gears that you unlock in the game are level set so you would have to like grind with characters that you normally don't use um, to to unlock I mean do able to use that uh, particular customizable item for the particular character so it has that like slight I mean it has that minor RPG element where you have to level up your characters so that that is a uh, something to be factor of like I made that mistake where I I equipped a cool uh, a cool gear for one of my characters but it didn't work because I was not at the right level so it didn't let me equip it so there's that um, but this main is miss my main mode is mainly for players to grind out for gears and to uh, challenge themselves on various AI you could also play um, the battle simulator is also under this mode It's not separate for some reason and the battle simulator is basically this game's arcade mode and uh, it's tier based too so you have like easy normal hard and uh, each tier has a uh, different amount of opponents that you're required to defeat and then when you de play the art, um, battle simulator, uh, you'll have um, your very own character endings for each character and see what happens uh, when you beat it with every character. Also, um, one thing I didn't, I kind of, uh, well here is just a nitpick at this point, but it was when you beat the battle simulator and like see the character's ending, you don't really, I don't think you really have a, gallery in this game where it lets you view uh, character endings that you've beaten so if you let's say you beat the game with Batman and your friend comes over and one like hey, I kinda wanna check the Batman's ending without you know beating arcade mode again kinda don't you have to just beat it again but outside of that like you know that's my only real nitpick about that situation you know like who cares 
I'm I'm, I'm happy this game even has an arcade mode. Some some fighting games, <coughs> Street Fighter Five, don't even have a arcade mode. I like uh, I like the different uh, challenges in the game. Outside, uh, some of the challenges, uh, they make you pay. Uh, to play some of the challenges are l like level required like it tells you like you have to at least be like level 20 to be suited to play to do this challenge because it's really hard I played a few challenges in this game that are like really hard <laughs> you know so it's cool I I had uh, my enjoyment I like I because of it I also played with uh, characters I normally don't play with so I think that's a plus of um, with these leveling up characters. You also have a AI AI battle mode where you you could set up your own customized character to battle a, someone someone else's team of customized characters, and you could just take a break and watch your computer beating up the other computer you absolutely have no control over this mode you can do nothing but watch as your characters either beat someone's ass or get murdered by a superior AI you could also uh, customize on your characters fighting style of uh, if you want to be more aggressive or more defensive in the, the, the options of the character cu uh, customized abilities when you customize your characters in the AI battle specifically it has its own uh, customized menu from the main game um, which is weird but whatever like it's fun you could do this a few times a day to unlock loot crates I mean to unlock uh, more gear boxes uh, but you only do it a few times a day so you can't spam out hours of playing this to um, to get a bunch of loot boxes I think you can only do like like four or five times a day and then it stops giving you loot bo boxes for the day and then come back try tomorrow but um it's really cool you get to see how well um, your customized character compares to others but other than that the only other uh, thing left to talk about is like the online and you have your typical online mode. You have your rank battle, play player battle. Um, your gears are unaffected during uh, r online rank battles. Like you might be able, like you know, uh, you could customize your characters of uh, what they like wear, but the uh, the effects of the gear will have no effect during rank. But the, you can play online during player battle and there you go use the effects of your gear but other than that um, I had no troubles of playing online no lag issues no disconnections no crashes for the most part uh, like it like online work fine no problems with the online you know your standard uh, modes that you expected from a uh, fighting game to have in the year 2017 um outside of that yeah I was really pleased on um the new additions of this game so if basically if you're a, a if you're a DC comics fan if you're a fighting game fan Pick this one up. Um, you won't regret it. Um, yeah, this is gonna be my uh, review, my final thoughts. Add this game to your collection if you're a fighting game enthusiast. Um, so, yeah, if you like this video, uh, hit a like, subscribe, leave a comment, and I will be back in the near future with more videos and I'll try not to have like a month with no content <laughs> you know um, this is evil uh, signing out thank you for watching and see you next time peace